Corky, an ex-con recently released from prison, is hired as a plumber within an apartment building in which, on her first day, she meets Violet, a girlfriend of gangster Caesar. After their brief encounter, Violet invites Corky over to retrieve her earring from the sink's drainage when Caesar isn't present. Using this opportunity to begin their affair together, their feelings ignited for each other. After a particularly violent interrogation within Caesar's apartment, with an ex-mobster and the rediscovery of a few missing million dollars, Violet and Corky craft a plan to run away together with the money. A plan which goes south quickly when Caesar is determined to find where the money has disappeared to no matter what. This is Lana and Lily Wachowski's Bound, a sapphic neo-noir loosely inspired by the works of Alfred Hitchcock and Billy Wilder. Shot on a small budget, Bound cleverly utilises a limited number of locations to explore a daring sexual lesbian relationship, while never squandering the potential suspense of the narrative's constant stream of complications and conflict, making each sequence more tense than the last. With central themes of mistrust and deliberation of love, Bound's layered sense of suspicion creates a clever stream of tension even between allied characters. The impact Lana and Lily Wachowski have had on the mainstream filming landscape is undeniable, with their genre fusion sci-fi martial arts epic The Matrix being the first film to sell a million units on DVD, grossing 460 60 million dollars worldwide, while their creative influences are worn clearly on their sleeves. The Wachowski sisters themselves became powerhouses of mainstream science fiction with the success of the Matrix trilogy, and to the growing cult following of Cloud Atlas. The grand scale of their filmmaking is admirable, but within their directorial debut Bound, the Wachowski sisters crafted a taut, immaculate thriller that demonstrated their storytelling ability transcended sheer spectacle. Discussing the significance and visual prowess of Bound, James Robert Douglas wrote for The Guardian stating that Word was that Bound was only ever a stepping stone. Its six million dollar budget, petty cash to any post-Matrix blockbuster, offered only to prove they could run a set. But watch the film now and you'll find not only an immaculately crafted neo-noir, but also a skeleton key to the sisters' entire career. The comic book look of the Matrix films always generated talk. But here in a minor mode, you appreciate what the Wachowskis' graphic sensibility adds to their storytelling. Years before the much imitated bullet time, the sisters were giving their gunfire kinetic visual accentuation in the form of shattering picture frames and swirls of spilt paint. The ability to inject action into small contained locations, the shattering of a picture frame by a swift bullet, millions of dollars hidden within thick paint, the destruction of an entire apartment, the literal binding of Corky within the shoe closet, demonstrates that the Wachowski sisters always had the ability to craft engaging visual kinesis, no matter the scale or setting. The impact of Bound's imagery can certainly match that of the Matrix's. One of Bound's most recognisable visual details is the use of exaggerated shadows, firmly giving the film a strong neo-noir identity. Many scenes look tastefully dark, lit sensibly to retain the sense of darkness, a darkness which avoids impeding the audience's ability to view the events of the scene. A striking example is during Corky's and Violet's sex scene, a potentially graphic moment that is restrained by the thoughtful placement of lighting and shadows, which allows the bodies of these characters to be silhouetted, hiding away the most graphic details and allowing the focus to fall on the sense of physical intimacy and chemistry within the scene instead. The use of shadows within Bound not only provides a distinct visual aesthetic to the film, but it also assists in emphasising the film's most sultry moments, creating the impression that within those moments, the only two people who matter are Corky and Violet. Brilliantly performed by Gina Gershon as Corky and Jennifer Tilly as Violet, with a standout supporting performance from Joe Pantoliano as Caesar, the manipulator gangster partner of Violet, who is thrown through a whirlwind of emotion, fear, anger, terror, vulnerability, humour, all before revealing his true abusive nature. 
bound to demonstrate that with a smaller, limited budget, and with only a few possible locations for filming, that a truly captivating thriller can be crafted, not unlike the limited settings of Hitchcock's Rope, or the apartment-based affair drama of Wilder's The Apartment. The central theme of mistrust, eventually overcome by a redemptive rebuilding of trust, and a liberation through love, is sown throughout Bound. Mistrust is apparent within characters such as Mickey's torturous interrogation of mobster turned suspected traitor Shelley, as Mickey demands to know where the mob's missing millions is stashed, Caesar's and Johnny's dysfunctional relationship dripping in passive aggression and suspicions, as Caesar comes to believe, through Violet's lie, that Johnny has stolen the money from under Caesar's nose, and the most significant sense of mistrust is demonstrated in Corky and Violet, during the initial discussion of their plan to swipe the two million from the mob and go on the run. Corky is an ex-convict recently released from prison, serving time after a previous partner betrayed her. She's been hurt once before, and she's worried about being hurt again. The intentional double meaning of this emotion is clear, as not only is Corky worried about being betrayed while the stakes are so high once again, but this is also clearly reminiscent of the despondency people can experience after a tough breakup. That feeling of not wanting to go through a relationship again due to the prospect of getting hurt. This is a subtext that is all the more clear when noting how close Corky and Violet have become so quickly. If their plan goes wrong, or if Violet planned to betray Corky, the sting would be unbearable. However, it's only through their love for each other, their sheer dedication and protection for each other, do Corky and Violet overcome their feelings of mistrust. From the mistrusts, tension frequently arises. Can anyone truly be trusted within this situation? If not, then how long is it before appearances slip and plans turn sour? A great example is when Johnny arrives at Caesar's apartment with his mob boss father Gino. Caesar's suspicions of Johnny at an all-time high. Each sentence of his a passive-aggressive jab at the suspicion that Johnny has stolen two million dollars from right under Caesar's nose, despite Johnny having no clue what is going on due to Caesar's suspicions being fed by a lie of Violet's in her plan to run away with Corky and the money. The premise might seem convoluted, but the results are immense, making the sequence magnetic viewing. As Johnny slowly opens the suitcase to discover newspapers, Caesar quickly pulling a gun on him. Not only does the passing of money to the mob boss go to shit, but Caesar's and Johnny's tension has boiled over. Violet's and Corky's plans are becoming more difficult to undertake, and Caesar pulling a gun on mob authorities pushes him into a corner with no point of return. As the shit hits the fan, there's no turning back, and stemming from that initial mistrust, things can only go from bad to worse. The representation of a lesbian relationship within Bound is daring during the 90s, when such representation was either uncommon or often presented for sexual titillation of a heteronormative audience. This isn't to suggest that Bound isn't without a sense of eroticism, but the sexuality presented is solely for the characters Violet and Corky to demonstrate their adoration for each other. Discussing the sapphic relationship between Violet and Corky and how it avoids degrading its characters, James Robert Douglas wrote later in his article, Bound stands out for the way it invests its genre tropes with unabashed romantic sincerity. The erotics of the scenario are certainly foregrounded when Violet puts the moves on Corky by inviting her over to do some light plumbing. The Wachowskis make the image of a leaky kitchen pipe into something hilariously suggestive, but beyond the frisson generated between the leads, what you really notice is that they genuinely seem to be delighted by each other, whereas other erotic thrillers had a somewhat self-reflexive, misogynistic tinge. Bound's feminist implications are unmudded. These women want out of patriarchal mob society, and the film wants them to get there. While Bound does embrace the playful side of sexuality, the leaky pipe underneath the kitchen sink is a great example, followed by the hem of Violet's skirt hitting Corky's eyeline. The sense of adoration and vulnerability between these two characters is so genuine. Their arguments and initial doubts about each other's intentions reflect the genuine uncertainty certainties of a relationship still within the early stage, but the signs of affection, from how they speak to each other on the phone, to how they reach for each other through the wall between the apartments, is sincere. These are two women in love, with the intent to escape a violent patriarchal hierarchy. They feel like authentic characters, which assists in the audience's rooting for their success. It's a bonus if women can find something to identify themselves within these two characters. 
In conclusion, Lily and Lana Wachowski's Bound wasn't just an example of things to come within their careers, but the film itself hosts an electrifying focus on tension, visual action, and detail that makes the film magnetic as a thriller, as well as the authenticity of Corky's and Violet's relationship, which makes the film so captivating as a romance. Like a 90s feminist equivalent to Hitchcock, Bound deserves its praise as an early career achievement in filmmaking, as well as the appreciation of the film as a modern LGBTQ plus classic. Special thank you to my incredible tier Patreon supporter Gil and my super tier Patreon supporter Constantin Bombelli. 